Hey there, this is Dr. Falcon, and today I'm going to show you how to replace a keyboard on Lenovo G450 laptop. Um, apparently, many of these uh, G models have the same construction, so depending on your model, these instructions may apply to you even if you don't have a G450. Um, this is my third replacement. Uh, the first one just sort of died on me, and uh, the second one we got a can of carpet cleaner confused with a compressed air can, so we squirted a bunch of carpet cleaner liquid into the keyboard, which screwed it up. So um, the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver. Um, I like the jeweler size tools. You're also going to need a um, Phillips screwdriver. Again, the jeweler size screwdrivers are pretty good. Um, and then if you have giant uh, fingers like mine, you might need a grabber. There are two small screws we're going to remove today. And if you drop them uh, inside the laptop, you may need that grabber. Uh, you could also use something that's magnetic. So uh, you just don't want a magnet that's super strong because you are dealing with uh, computer equipment. Okay, so the first thing is that, uh, that you need to know is that we're only going to pry open the top plastic fascia of the laptop. That's this part here. There are two plastic fascia pieces. There's this bottom larger U-shape, and then there's the top bar. Um, on all the other laptops I've ever disassembled, you need to take this larger piece off and actually, uh, you don't need to do that to remove the keyboard. And if you do, you'll probably bust off one of the tabs like I have, which is why this um, end sticks up. So you want to take your um, flat head screwdriver, your standard screwdriver, and I'm going to turn this so we can see a little bit better. And so what we're going to do is there's a uh, little tiny separation between the fascia and the rest of the laptop. You just want to get your screwdriver in there and just sort of lift it up a bit. You don't need to apply a lot of force. Now, if this is the first time you've taken this fascia off, it may a little bit be a little bit tighter, so just be careful there. Um, all right, do the other side here. Um, if you are particularly concerned about the appearance of your laptop, you may want to use uh, a piece of cloth or a piece of uh, paper towel so you don't mar up the side here. I don't really care. Okay, so now that the fascia is uh, popped off of its protective little hooks or tabs, I'm going to pull this off gently, and there is a ribbon here that you need to be careful about. Don't disconnect that. That's what powers the LEDs and all that stuff, and um, also allows you to push the buttons. So um, You can just bend it a little bit like this. All right. So the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to expose some screws. Apparently my, there we go. Um, there are two screws. There's one here, and then there's one on the opposite side. This is all you need to do to uh, disconnect your keyboard in your Lenovo G450. So you'll need your Phillips screwdriver. Actually begs an interesting question. I wonder if, if you uh, live somewhere else in the world, they'll use a different driver. Uh, now, these little tiny screws are really important, obviously. And I don't know if you can see here, but they used to be held on by blue Loctite. Having uh, taken this apart twice before, they're fairly loose now. I've not had a problem with them, so I did not feel the need to put more Loctite on. But the first time you do this, you may have uh, a little bit harder time than I. So I'm going to take the second one off. All right. And just a little tip, whenever you take a screw out for a computer so you don't lose it, I always put it head side down so it doesn't roll around. Don't want to lose those. Okay, so what you do now is you uh, pick the laptop keyboard up and you lift it forward. Now, be gentle because there's a ribbon. So I lift it up and forward and then I flip it over backwards. And this will reveal the ribbon, the connection ribbon. This is really important. You want to be gentle. The way that it works, and what you'll need to do, is there are two little black tabs here that um, hold the keyboard ribbon in its locked position on the motherboard. Okay, You need to make sure that these are secure. If you don't, then the ribbon may look like it's installed properly, but it may not be, and then your keyboard won't work correctly. 
So what you do is you take your flathead screwdriver, or if you have long fingernails, you could do this. And you just push these black tabs up. Okay? And that's going to allow you to remove the ribbon. I want to get out of the way of the shot here. Just like that, okay? As you heard, there's a little bit of adhesive on the ribbon from the laptop. So just be, you know, gentle but firm. I'm going to set that aside. Now, you may want to take this opportunity to clean the inside of your laptop. Um, I'm going to get a can of compressed air, not a carpet cleaner, and give this a shot. Blow all this crap out of here. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our new keyboard. Um, as of this video recording, they're about 13 bucks on eBay. It's not too terrible. And you'll see that you got a new ribbon here. Okay. So try not to touch the contact points. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but I would just err on the side of caution. So you want to Take the ribbon, make sure it's straight, and try to do this with one hand so you can see. You just gently put the ribbon into, into the uh, contact point here. I don't know what I've done with my other screwdriver, but this black lock has come down. So you make sure that both of the black retainer locks, retainer tabs, are up. Okay, there you go. Now, when you're sure that's in all the way, push the retaining tabs down. And just to be sure, give it a little slight tug. You don't need to uh, he-man it, just make sure it's in there. Okay, you then set the keyboard back in the tray. There are some um, tabs at the bottom here. So you wanna make sure that those go in first. So you put the bottom in first at a slight angle. You push down, just gently, just will sit in there just fine. All right. Now I'm going to reattach the screws. This is my least favorite part. Um, due to the size of my fingers, sometimes the uh, screw will come loose and then it will go inside the laptop and I have to go fishing for it. All right. If you have a screwdriver with a magnetic head, that would be awesome. Um, again, you don't need to super tighten this down, just being gentle, I think, is the more important part. Uh, you want to make sure that it's the keyboard is secure, of course, but you don't really need to uh, exert a lot of pressure. To the other side. There we go. Now, what we'll do is we'll take the top fascia. It doesn't matter how you put it in, but I always like to put the top edge in first. And just lightly press all the way down, and the tabs will naturally go where they're supposed to go. And there you go. Well, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you've never done it before, it can be a little bit confusing. I took the whole bottom part off before I realized that I just needed to do the top. Um, if you have any questions about doing this, please let me know. Just post a comment in the YouTube, uh, YouTube page for this. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my videos or check out my blog at journal.drfalcon.com. Hope this was helpful, and don't use carpet cleaner to clean your keyboard.